The Pogo plug is a great little storage device, but you can do a lot more with it, like turn it into a web server. So we're going to do that. What you'll need is a USB key, a Pogo plug, a computer, and a little bit of comfort with the terminal. The first thing you need to do is log into mypogoplug.com and then go into your settings. Once you're there, you have a couple of options. What we want to get into is security settings. From security settings, you'll see an option. There it is at the bottom. Enable SSH access for this pogo plug. It'll ask you to choose a password, so go ahead and do that. Just remember what it is, and then hit OK. Now you have SSH enabled on your pogo plug. The next thing you need to do is find out the IP address of your pogo plug. You can usually just pick that up somewhere in your router under DHCP clients. Once you've got your IP address, let's get into the command line. You're going to SSH as root into your pogo plug using the IP you just picked up. Enter the password you set in my.pogoplug.com and then enter the command kill all space hbwd. That'll kill your pogo plug services. Now we need to change into the temp folder so we can download the uboot installer script. Just enter wget space the URL that you see on the screen and it will start downloading. When it's done, we need to change permissions on the installer file so we can run it. We're adding executable permissions. Whoops, typed it wrong. Okay, now that I've got it right, I'm typing dot slash install underscore uboot underscore mtd0 dot sh. That'll run the installer. There will be a couple of options you'll have to respond to as the installer goes along, like do you want to disable the pogo plug services? Uh, we already did that, but might as well put yes. Next, you're going to be asked what kind of pogo plug device you have. I have a pink version 2, so I am going to select that. It looks like my installation failed. I'm not entirely sure why, but what you can do is add this no uboot check flag to the installer and run it again. So you have to go through everything again, and this isn't terribly recommended because it can totally break your device, but it worked for me, so I'm happy with the results. Next, you need to insert your USB key into any of the Pogo Plug's USB ports. This is so we can start installing Linux onto the flash drive. The next step is preparing your USB key for installation. You probably have some stuff on it, and be aware, it's all getting deleted in this process. What we're going to do is find every partition on the USB key and remove it. To do that, we need to run fdisk. So type slash sbin slash fdisk space slash dev slash sda. Now you can enter commands. Typing P and Enter will show you your partitions, and you might have a couple. As you can see from mine, I have mine set up already with Linux all done. So I don't really want to be deleting these partitions because I'm actually using them. In your case, you're going to want to type D and then 1, D and then 2, D and then 3, etc. to start deleting the partitions off your drive. To check that all the partitions are deleted for sure, type P to list them. If there's nothing there, you're good. Now type N and enter to make a new partition. Type P to set it to primary. Press enter, then 1 to set it to the first partition on the drive. Enter again. And then you'll just be pressing enter a few more times to set the default values. When it's all done creating your new partition, type W to exit. Now to get the file system working on this flash drive, we need to download MKE2FS. So W get the URL on the screen and let it download. Once the download's complete, you're going to want to type chmod755 mke2fs, and that will change permissions on mke2fs. Now let's run it, dot slash mke2fs space slash dev slash sda1. Hit enter, and it will do its work. Now we need to make a new directory in temp called usb, and then mount slash dev slash sda1 to that USB directory. Once the mounting is complete, change your directory to USB and wget the URL on the screen. That is Plugbox Linux, which is what your Pogo plug is going to be running. Now this is going to take a little while to download, maybe a minute or two. We're uh, speeding it up here just so we can move past that. When you're done, unzip the file using the command you see on the screen, tar space minus xzvf space 
plugsbox-linux-1.1-rootfs.tar.gz. This is going to take a really long time, so let's just skip it. When you're done, cd to the parent directory, then unmount USB, and reboot. You're going to be disconnected, and we'll see if it works. When your Pogoplug reboots, it may be under the same IP address, or it may be under a new one. In my case, I got a new IP address, so when I try to SSH into the old one, it doesn't work so well. Given the new one a shot, I'm able to get in, but it's worth noting that your root password is now root. It's not what you set it to in my.pogoplug.com. So when you log in, use username root and password root. First things first, let's update our packages by typing pacman space minus capital S YU. You might have to run this a couple of times just to get all your packages up to date because pacman itself might be out of date. But once you're done, you're good. There are a couple of other things we're going to want to do right off the bat, and one is change your root password to something else. Since you're logged in as root, you can do that just by typing password, or, well, the abbreviation of it, P-A-S-S-W-D. Then type in the new password and you're all set. The other thing is to set the date and time of the server. This is a little confusing to type, I guess. Uh, basically, you type date, space, and then the two-digit month, the two-digit day, the hour and minute in 24-hour time, and then the four-digit year. Enter, and your new date will be set. Wow, so that was a lot of work just getting Linux onto the Pogo plug, but we did it. And now it's setting up the web server time. The idea is to turn this into a LAMP server, which means Linux, Apache, MySQL, and PHP. So first things first, we need to download those packages, and we can do that via pacman. To get them, we're going to type pacman space minus capital S Y space Apache space MySQL space PHP. Hit enter, and you'll be prompted to confirm that you want to download all this crap. Say yes, and wait a little while. Before we can get going, we need to install Apache Control so we can actually start it. To do that, we'll use Pacman again. Type Pacman space minus capital S Y space links. It'll install pretty quickly using the method you're probably used to at this point. And we're almost done. You may need to do a couple more things, and that's add an HTTP user and configure your host file. To add an HTTP user, just enter the command you see on the screen. If your HTTP user already exists, no harm done. Otherwise, you've successfully created one. Next, you need to edit your etc. slash host file. You'll see here I have the local IP address set to localhost.local domain and the host name to plugbox. Yours might be set to localhost. If that's the case, edit your etc. slash rc.conf file and scroll down till you get to the host name. You'll see it's currently set to plug box in here. Now you can either change this to localhost or you can go back into your etc. host file and change that to plug box. Either way, they have to match. After you've done that, it's time to start Apache. To do that, type slash etc. slash rc.d slash httpd, don't forget the D like I'm about to, and space start. Once you do that, assuming everything is all well and good, Apache will start. To be sure that Apache's up and running, let's just head into our web browser and take a look at our local IP address. Yep, there it is. Now you have a web server running on your plug box.